Okay, so now we are going to dive into the appendicular skeleton. So when we're dealing with the appendicular skeleton, we're leaving the center of the body and we're going outward. So we're going and looking at the pectoral girdle and limb, and we're also going to be looking at the pelvic girdle and limb. So we're looking at the forelimbs and how the forelimbs are attached to the body, and we're looking at the hind limbs and how the hind limbs are attached to the body. And of course, we're going to start with squalus, and we're going to work our way up. This video will cover squalus, and it's also going to cover the fish. Um, put a daisy. So with squalus, which we have right here in our jar, if I bring this a little closer to you guys, you can see that I have a fin here, and I have a fin on the other side. And if you follow those up, and you look just below the water surface, which is hard to do, I know, here, there's a bar that connects these two fins. And I'm going to try my best to see what I can do with these jars, because it's really hard for me to show you these videos with them. But I might be able to kind of create something, uh, at least picture-wise, that'll help you guys view this cartilaginous skeleton a little bit better. So give me a little while. I'm going to work on that. But for the time being, let's work off some of these drawings instead. So that bar that I showed you, all right, is my coracoid bar. The coracoid bar is going across the body from one lateral side to the other, and it's going to be joining the two fins. Okay? These are going to be my pectoral fins. On each side here, I'm then going to have two processes that go up toward, from the ventral side to the dorsal side of the shark. These are scapular processes. This is a scapular process, and here's my other scapular process on the other side. Okay. Right about here, where the coracoid bar is joining up with the scapular process, there's a flattened surface. And this is going to be called the glenoid surface. All right? That's the glenoid sur surface. And let me erase that there. Of course, it is symmetrical. So on this side, we also have a glenoid surface. So this would be the dorsal. This would be ventral. This would be one lateral side, and this would be the other lateral side. So right here at this glenoid surface, I'm going to have my pectoral fin joining with this, this process right here with this um, girdle. That's the word. And the fin is going to look a little bit like this. All right? And these are going to be my basal pterygiophores. Remind myself how to spell pterygiophores. These would be my radial pterygiophores, and make sure you spell out pterygiophores if you were writing this on an exam or a quiz. And then these would be my serratotrachea. And they look like these rays going down, and this is not the best drawing, 
but it's it gives you an idea of what it looks like. And these are a whole bunch of different bones. Or not bones, but cartilage. Making up all of these radial pterygiophores. That's why it's plural, pterygiophores, instead of pterygia. Okay, so on and so forth. And same with the basal pterygiophores. And together, this is making up the fin, the pectoral fin. And of course, you'd have another pectoral fin over here. And notice, next to the glenoid surface, I have another glenoid surface. And this glenoid surface is on the pectoral fin, and it joins the glenoid surface on the pectoral girdle. And that glenoid surface on the pectoral girdle is right between the scapular process and the coracoid bar. There's a piece of cartilage that does this on both sides. It's the suprascapular cartilage. You don't have to know about that. Okay, but your book does talk about it. That's going to be the pectoral girdle for a shark. The other one we have is going to be the pelvic girdle. And obviously we have to go a little bit further down. And this is going to be around where we start seeing the trunk going into the caudal region. And so if I showed you You can see the bar going across. You can see the fins off to each side. This is the pelvic girdle, and it's going to be very similar to what we just talked about with the pectoral girdle, with some slight differences. There's some other structures that we need to know down in there. Once again, we're going to have a bar. That's going to go across. That's the pubio the sciatic bar. And then right on each side, there's a small piece of cartilage, and that's the iliac process. And here's the other iliac process. So here, once again, we're looking at a dorsal view up here. And this would be ventral down here. All right. Coming off of the iliac process, we have a surface, once again. And this surface is referred to as the acetabular surface. Acetabular surface. It's analogous to the glenoid surface that we just saw. Now what you're going to notice is as we start to go to these more, um, we start to go to these taxa further down our phylogenetic tree, mammals, for example, we're going to continue to see certain names that remain the same. If you know a little bit about human anatomy, you're like, wait a minute, a lot of this is fairly similar to human anatomy. And you'll, th that's for a reason, because these are very homologous structures. Coming off of the acetabular surface, and I'll draw it over here, you have a small bone there called the serratotrachea. And sorry, once again, this is cartilage, not bone. And then you have really one more new structure that you need to learn. Coming off of here, and going down, is your metatrigium. It's a really big cartilage that basically takes the place of the basal, basal pterygiophores that we were just talking about. 
So it's, it's one long one, hence meta, and it's still a pterygium, but since there's just one, it's singular, pterygium, instead of pterygia fours. And then coming off of these, are your radial pterygiophores once again. And then coming off the radial pterygiophores are your serratotrachea. So a lot of this is very similar to the pectoral fin. In the pelvic fin, we're in the pelvic fin here. Wait. I wrote something wrong. Ah, sorry. Get rid of that guy. Okay, that's the proterygium. Proterygium. And this cartilage, I don't need you to know. Okay, that's the proterygium. We, we, don't, we won't learn that one. But I want to keep this as similar as possible for you guys, so we're not learning too much new things. You have radial trigeophores that join with serratotrachea, just like before. You had basal trigeophores, but now you just have one long one, so it's a meta -trigium. These are joining with the pelvic girdle. And in the pelvic girdle, you have an iliac process on both sides. You have a pubio ischiatic bar, and you're going to see that that's very similar to the structures we see in upcoming uh, vertebrates. And then at each point here where the girdle meets up with the fin, you have an acetabular surface. Okay, and that would be on both the bone or the, the cartilage you don't need to know, the proterygium, and on the iliac process. All right. One last thing. You can see here the metatrygium ends right about there. If I bring back this guy, and I show you its, pro, it's a metatrygium, you see it goes down to where the radial trigeophores end and the serratotrachea end, and that's it. Okay? That's it for the fin. That tells me that this isn't a guy, this is a female, it's a gal. And I know that based off of the uh, pelvic fin, because if this was a guy, this metatrygium would extend a lot further down, much further down from where that fin ends. And then, on the end of it, you would have a structure that looks like that, where you have a hook and you have a spine. This would be the spine, this would be the hook. You don't need to know the hook and the spine, but what you need to know is that this part of the metatrigium on a male that extends beyond the fin Call it, it's called a clasper. Sharks have a cloaca, just like many other vertebrates have. And sharks actually have, unlike most fish, they have internal fertilization. And the male will use this clasper as a method to transfer sperm from his body to the female's body. And so that's what this clasper is going to be used for. So in our specimen here, you can see that the metatrigium ends right about where the radial trigeophores end. And the fin kind of terminates going this way. If it was a male, that clasper would extend a lot further down. It would be like twice the length of, of what it is right now, the metatrigium is. So that tells me that we are definitely dealing with a female in that case because we're missing the clasper. And of course this fin, we'd have a similar fin over here for the shark as well. All right. 
big thing that as we're going through the appendicular skeleton is compare a lot of these names with the names you're about to see with some of the, the upcoming taxa. All right. um, fish are kind of strange. So I'm not going to go too far into depth on the appendicular skeleton of fish. One of the big things that you're going to see with fish now is that calcified skeleton, so that we actually have a true skeleton, but you're still seeing a lot of similarities with the shark. All right. So for our fish, let me turn to the page in the book. I'm going to point you guys to page 80. And if you have the updated version, I apologize, your page numbers might not, not line up exactly with, with mine here. But once again, you have pectoral fin and you have a pelvic fin on our perch. Okay? And we'll start first with the pectoral fin, of course. And this is going to join right by where the gills are. So you can see the gills, oh, you can't see that. You can see the gills are right here and right behind it, posterior to it would be the pectoral fin. And if I look at that pectoral fin, what I'm going to see is cartilage that looks like this. And then I'm going to have a big piece of cartilage down here. Let me redraw that. and then my fin coming off of this. This is called the scapula. We're not going to learn about this one. Here, once again, I have radial pterygophores. And then in place of the serratotrachea, we're just going to call these fin rays. So if we look at our, our fish here, you can slightly see those structures, but once again on page 80 you're going to see it a lot better within your book. All right. This is figure 4.2 in my book, uh, I have version 3 or, or edition 3, um, or 2, I have the second edition. So if you have the third edition you might see that it, maybe the pages have shifted a little bit. So somebody definitely shoot me an email and let me know if that's the case. Um, but once again, we have radial trigeophores and we have our scapula. All right. The reason why I didn't want you learning the uh, prochoracoid is because here we have a prochoracoid and we're on the, a different fin. So I, I don't want us learning that because it's confusing. So we're just not going to learn that piece um, of the puzzle. But what you need to know is that now in the pectoral girdle of the fish, we're seeing that bar going away and the radial trigeophores are now joining with the body via a scapula. And obviously, you know, humans have a scapula, so you can see that's going to be something that sticks around. If we leave the pectoral fin, pectoral girdle, and we go to the pelvic fin. Now, I'm going to first draw this for you guys, and then I'm going to show it to you on the, on the fish. So, you're going to have a bone that looks like this. And then you're going to have your fin rays. Okay, I'll put my shark back here. And this bone here is the baby pterygium. I'm going to spell that. Terugium. So 
So here I have, instead of Bayesian pterygium fours, I have just one long one, so it's Bayesian Bayesi pterygium. And I'm completely missing my radial pterygium fours. I just jump straight into the thin rings. Now, if this was a regular fish, I'm only going to draw half of my fish. I have my dorsal fins up here, my anterior and posterior dorsal fins. I have my caudal fin here. I have an anal fin sitting down in there. And I would have my pectoral fin there. If you look at a bass, if you look at a tuna, if you look at the majority of fish out there, this is the way it's set up. Um, unfortunately, we dissect perch for some reason. That's just the common fish that everybody dissects. And perch are part of a family called, called Persidae. And in Persidae, you have perch and then you have things called darters. And the, one of the big characteristics of perch and darters is that pelvic fin that normally is down here is pushed all the way up to here. Normally down here, as I just drew on the board, as if that was a bass. But instead, it's pushed all the way anteriorly. And you find the pelvic fin all the way up here, just below the pectoral fin. So on a perch, uh, the basia pterygium pore would be coming off here, basia pterygium. And then you'd have your fin rays right here. And so you'd have your pelvic fin here and your pectoral fin right there. Perch are kind of weird. Um, but it's still slightly posterior to the pelvic fins, and it's still the um, pectoral fin uh, that I'm showing you the structures of right there. So it's really simplistic. I don't want you to learn too much about the fish because fish are kind of weird. Um, but then we're going to now, on the next video, we're going to jump into amphibian, amphibia. And in amphibia, you're going to start to see a lot of transitions now from this and sharks to maybe what you're more used to in mammals. And then once we learn the amphibians, we'll jump into mammals with the third video, and you'll see completely how all of this is transformed into what you and I have. All right?